This person with her head in a muddy hole is my museum co-worker Bronwyn Williams. She's digging for a crayfish, something that's right now known as a sickle crayfish. Whew. I've lost the hole big time. They're not the easiest things to catch. All right. <laughs> this burrow is... <laughs> Try the water trick on this one. If this doesn't work, then. <sighs> oh, there we go. Working at a science museum, a lot of my research colleagues are taxonomic experts. They're the people who know enough about a particular group of organisms where they can tell if something's different enough to be called a new species. I don't have that level of expertise, but I'm constantly impressed by the people around me who do, and I want to share some of their stories here on this channel. So recently, I followed one of my colleagues out into the field to collect a crayfish. This is one she'll soon describe as a new species. It gets to the water by digging. It constructs a burrow all the way down to the water table. Okay, so we've got several different burrows here, the holes, but what I want you to see is this right here, which is a chimney. Um, you can tell it's fresh, sort of got fairly um, wet mud balls, and this one's actually capped as well. So there is no hole, and uh, this is done. The crayfish actually will plug the, um, the top of their chimney when it gets kind of really too hot. Um, to sort of void off any desiccation. So we have another chimney here, sort of by the side of the path. And you can tell this one's dried out, so it's not nearly as fresh. It's not plugged. I'm not guaranteed that there's an individual in there, but I'd probably try to, try to give this a dig as well. These chimneys are actually species specific. And so what's kind of neat is the ones that are dried like this, gently, um, sort of remove this from, from the grass. So the size of the mud mulls and the shape of kind of how this chimney is constructed can be very species diagnostic. Specimens that I collect uh, when I'm in the field ultimately end up back here in the non-molluscan invertebrate collection. They're fixed, they're housed in, in, in ethanol, basically for you know long-term, i.e. hopefully forever storage. Okay, so we're now in one of the three major collections ranges or rooms um, out at the research lab, the museum. This area is sort of dedicated to the non-molluscan invertebrates, which include all of the crayfishes. The idea of being stewards of this collection is to make sure that we sort of care for and maintain these um, for permanent use. Kind of these are more foothills um, and Piedmont crayfishes. And some of our many, we are currently working on crayfishes over on, on sort of this side. When a species is described, so let's say we were to take one of these sort of known undescribed species back there and describe it, you designate what's called a type series which are specific individuals that you use that are sort of designated as the examples what that species is. And we have um, several hundred of these, these type specimens of crayfishes that we keep um, in fireproof cabinets under lock and key. Um, they're that valuable. And this one houses most of our crayfish type specimens which are kind of in these four shelves. And one of the specimens that I'm particularly proud of is this one. It's the South Mountains crayfish. This is the holotype, which I helped describe in 2019. It's only found in the state of North Carolina and primarily kind of in and just outside of South Mountain State Park. I'm interested in crayfish for the sake of crayfish, but also, um, all of the other organisms that uh, basically live on the crayfish. I 
study um, a group of worms that are closely related to leeches and a group of ostracods or seed shrimp um, that are obligate uh, inhabitants of, of crayfishes. Different species are actually sort of found on different parts of the crayfish. Um, sometimes you'll find them in the gill chamber, sometimes they'll be between the bases of the walking legs or on the claws, uh, and sometimes they'll be very, very visible. You'll have one that's right on the rostrum or that nose like projection. My goal with my research with this work is to ensure that the entirety of the biodiversity of crayfishes in this state is adequately conserved. There are 48 named species in North Carolina. Given what we have discovered over the last couple of years, we probably have doubled that number. So right now, this is considered the, the sickle crayfish, but let's say in another two or three years uh, down the road, once our work is completed, uh, this will become probably the newest uh, species to be described um, from North Carolina, which is pretty neat uh, for having something like this sort of in the outskirts of Charlotte. So there's a lot left to discover. I originally made this video to run as a local PBS segment, but I thought it was cool enough that I wanted to re-edit it and show it here. If you like this type of content, let me know in the comments. There are many more stories like this around here to tell. Thanks for watching.